welcome to Everfree Radio with our episode review of the episode Family Appreciation Day. I am your host, Brush and Bones. I'm Crescendo. And I'm Moonlight. Unfortunately, our normal co-host, Autumn Spice, couldn't be with us here today, despite really wanting to, because in her own words, this is her favorite episode of the series so far. But she's with us in our hearts. Now then... This episode is a it is an absolute joy of an episode, an absolute gem, uh, in which we get a detailing of a little bit of the past of Ponyville, as well as some insight into Apple Bloom and Applejack's family life, uh, particularly in regards to one one old mare, Granny Smith. <laughs> now, the the entire episode starts off around the premise that it is now the perfect time of the season to harvest zap apples. Now, zap apples are a magical apple that have to be harvested a very, very specific way. And once they're harvested, they have to, uh, when they're made into jam, they have to be made into the jam a very, very specific way. Hijinks to follow. Yeah, I, I found it quite interesting the, with all the things that Granny Smith has to do to prepare for making the jam but then again it's magic what do you really expect well magic doesn't follow any specific rule it's magic yeah in this particular instance uh the magic of it was was certainly an interesting thing to behold we've got a little bit more uh, of an example of the everfree forest being being quite a uh, quite an odd and interesting place as we learn that the zap apples uh, seeds that were used to grow the zap apple trees on the uh, apple family farm were taken from trees found in the Everfree Forest. But mostly, this is a character-based episode revolving around Apple Bloom and family. It's a very, very family-oriented episode, and uh, for the most part, it, it's about basically appreciating somebody and loving somebody regardless of their eccentricities and stuff like that especially if for all for all their eccentricities they wind up turning out to be right and granny smith is by far the most eccentric pony in the series so far and that's that's saying something considering that this is a show with pinkie pie in it yeah i, I do think though is um it's actually heartwarming to see how apple bloom changes her opinion of granny smith right at the end where she defends her from diamond tiara oh yeah by the way uh, did you like what uh diamond tiara's father's name is mr rich Filthy rich, yes. <laughs> yeah, filthy rich. <laughs> well, that must be saying something. And um, his grandfather, stinking rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in 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 regards to uh, that entire thing, I felt that it was a very, it had a very good flow, very very uh, very nice flow to it. You know, you start off the episode with everybody getting excited for zap zap apple harvesting time, getting prepared over the seven day course of the different events that signal the 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 growing of the zap apples and apple bloom getting excited because this is going to be her first season helping with the zap apple harvest and making zap apple jam and she's totally going with the flow of things totally totally not even questioning granny smith's eccentricities until other people bring them up at which point she gets embarrassed and so I find it to be a very, very relatable sort of situation for any child who is put into that kind of situation at that kind of age is very, very affected by the opinions of their peers. And uh, in, all, in all honesty, I could, I could see myself or, or any one of my uh, siblings, nieces or nephews, if they were to be put in that same situation where they are being put in an embarrassing situation by a family member that they would quickly attempt to distance themselves from that family member just as apple bloom did with granny smith well i'm sure we all have that one family member who is a bit odd i have more than one <laughs> yeah uh every every family has at least one some have more than one and i you felt lucky that... people <laughs> But the, the the intricate ways that in which Granny Smith 
was eccentric in this episode were, was very interesting too because she, while we get shown that yes she is an old pony so she has all of the various different things that come with being an old pony you know for, forgetfulness old rickety knees and all that good stuff we also see that oftentimes her eccentricity is just really really wise experienced you know it's, it's wisdom that has come from the knowledge of of years and years of experience you know People thought it was silly when her and Apple Bloom were dressed up in little bunny rabbit suits singing to the water cans, but that's how you gotta make the water happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the very stereotypical old person that is her character doesn't always necessarily have to be a bad thing. I mean, when you look at the story she's telling of... Ponyville being founded, that was such an interesting story. I thoroughly enjoyed it, as did Apple Bloom's classmates. Comparatively, when you see Apple Bloom's classmates when they're listening to Filthy Rich's story, they're all asleep and bored. Well, you know, you can only listen to one dude talk about how much money his family has and is purely made of for so long before you start to get bothered. But the founding of Ponyville was definitely, in my opinion, while, while I liked the very strong family-oriented moral of the story, you know, to, to always get behind your family, even if, they're, even if they seem weird or eccentric, I felt that the, the, the strongest part of this episode for me was the story about the founding of Ponyville, because it gave us some much, much needed, much desired in, in the fandom, uh, much desired backstory for, for Ponyville and the land of uh, Equestria as a whole, you know, you get to learn that it was the Apple family settlers who first settled in the area where Ponyville is today and that Granny Smith's father was an awesome guy when it came to seeds, especially apple seeds. And basically he was, uh, he's the Johnny Appleseed of this story, <laughs> so to speak. Although that has to bring to mind one question. Just how old is Granny Smith if she was around for the founding of Ponyville? Well, the real question is, how old is Ponyville? Because True. yeah, we don't actually know. Yeah, we don't actually know how old how old Ponyville is, and so we can't really accurately gauge Granny Smith's age. But all of the stuff that it dealt with the founding of Ponyville and the and and the backstory I found was very interesting. I especially loved it when um, during the story. And when you're getting all of the flashback imagery and stuff like that, when Granny Smith's father presents the seeds to Celestia and Celestia thinks that they're awesome or whatever. And then uh, when he kisses her hoof and his wife, <laughs> yeah. his wife is standing behind him, glaring at him. <laughs> She's just shooting daggers at him. <laughs> But yeah, one part of the flashback that I really enjoyed was the fact that Granny Smith, at her young age, was actually rather brave to go wandering into an unknown forest because her family needed food. And this is a tendency that's been present in both Apple Bloom and Applejack, and most likely Big Mac, we just haven't seen it. But they have a, a bravery where they feel... They need to go do something. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, speaking of bravery, I gotta say, who was expecting that puntacular awesomeness of the timber wolves? I certainly I wasn't. I think I was expecting I that. certainly no, wasn't, was I. but when I saw the timber wolves for the first time in that episode, I thought, those things are freaking awesome looking. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. And I'm certainly looking forward to more. We, we seem to be getting a lot of really interesting creatures this season. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of the best things about this show, you know, is, is all of the various different, you know, creatures that it's managed to feature uh, throughout the series. You know, you got a Manticore, you got a Hydra, you got Discord's a Draconiquis, you've got, uh, you know, the Timber Wolves, uh, you've got the Diamond Dogs, um, Dragons. Uh, uh, the the eels in the canyon um, during the uh, during the find a pet competition, um, all that kind of all that kind of stuff really serves to add add a kind of majestic spice 
to uh, to the entire environment. It, it really gives a sense of, of, of scale, you know. It's a really grand thing, all of these different species that exist in this world. And now they have a list of Equestria's 10 most dangerous animals. <laughs> I think Discord would top that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, one thing I was kind of disappointed about, not much, but kind of, was that despite getting a flashback into the past of Granny Smith, we did not find out what her 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 name when she was young was. Because... There's no way she could have been called Granny Smith when she wasn't a granny. I mean, yeah, Granny Smith Apple, that is an apple, but it would be quite an irony if somebody chose to name their child Granny Smith and they wind up being the only grandma and grandma character in pretty much the entirety of the series. We we did see a few older characters, and I think it was Madu Well in the retirement home for old ponies. <laughs> yeah, the Ponyville retirement home. We did get to see some other old some other old timers. Um, uh, one of which I believe his cutie mark was a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I was a little bit disappointed to see that they did not they did not provide a, a name for her in her youth uh, to to basically give us closure to that. A lot of people suspect it was probably apple pie, considering her cutie mark. But who's who 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 can tell, right? Oh, but um, on uh on the subject of this episode uh being about the zap apples what did you guys think of the zap apples themselves interesting interesting piece of fruit huh i, I was just thinking where's rainbow dash <laughs> that, that, that's all i could think of well if you're going to have a magic fruit you're going to make it rainbow colored now aren't you i, I think my favorite part of the apples was the uh the stems which were lightning bolt shaped oh i loved it the entire process, the magical growth, the giant lightning storm and stuff like that, the magical energies, the entire concept of the Zap Apples I found was, was really interesting and very, a very, very fresh take on the, these kind of magical things that you would get, you yeah, that you tend to get in these children's shows. And, and My Little Pony has been infamous for having magically, magical oriented things in its series from Gen 1 but uh, and onwards, but... I found this to be a very, very unique, very, um, very well done bit of bit of magic in this in this episode. This begs the question, though, since we know the weather is controlled by the Pegasi, except for in the Everfree Forest, do the plants in the Everfree Forest therefore control the weather? Because we get in this episode weather that isn't controlled by the Pegasi. I suspect that's probably the case. At least when it comes to the zap apple trees, because the zap apple trees, you know, their their harvest time is is basically signaled by the weather and the weather changes. So the forest itself is probably responsible for for generating a lot of the the, the quote unquote wild weather of the uh, of the Everfree Forest, the, the the stuff that's just oh so natural and so foreign to to the uh, of a concept to the minds of uh, these ponies. While we're on the subject of the zap apples um, harvesting, I found it quite interesting that Granny Smith, despite being so old and shown to have a bad hip, she was jumping around watering cans as if she were a child. How does she do that? Hey, she's got a lot of she's she's still got a lot of energy, and you know what? People, people, especially even even old people, even people who are disabled and stuff like that. They can put a lot of energy into stuff. They can accomplish a lot if their if their mind and their 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 heart are in the right place. If they've got the energy in the right place, and so uh, in all honesty, it doesn't surprise me that much. And also, I think that in all honesty, you get this mischievous side to Granny Smith throughout throughout this episode that kind of makes me think that perhaps she tends to play up her being an old an old pony more so than she honestly is. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily know why, aside from maybe just because she's got this natural mischievous side to her, but it really came off to me like she's she's obfuscating old age, you know, obf obfuscating senility 
and and and, and disability. There's also the possibility that Applejack did eventually manage to raise enough money to replace her hip. Hey, I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, because after all, we never see her with that walker ever again. No, we don't. Actually, I think this, yeah, this has definitely been the most Granny Smith we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have to say one other thing, though, and I know that a lot of people were probably disappointed with the episode because of this, but... I found that it was interesting to get to see some of the side character development more so than the main six. The main six didn't really make any appearance in this show, uh, in this in this episode, this time around. The few who did were, were pretty much in the background, for the most part, and Applejack was the most prominent one. And that was mostly just because of her being there to interact with Apple Bloom when Apple Bloom becomes, you know worried about becoming embarrassed because of Granny Smith. But in all honesty, I felt that it was very refreshing. You know, there's only so many times the episode can focus solely around the main six when there's such a large world to deal with. There's so many background ponies that have yet to get characterization and so many just minor ponies that do have something of a character but never got a lot of time on, you know, on screen or, or any kind of uh, representation, and I felt that this was good for that. It just goes to show the uh, the writers aren't so tunnel visioned on the main six. Which, in my opinion, is a good thing. Mine too. Other people might disagree. Other people might disagree, because, you know, everybody loves their various different favorites from the main six, but I, I found it to be a very refreshing episode, getting an opportunity to look at... Mo mostly the episode was about Apple Bloom, but we got a lot of development when it comes to side characters. I mean, we had the introduction of uh, Diamond Tiara's uh, family and a little bit of backstory there because Granny Smith even provided backstory saying that basically the reason why Diamond Tiara's family is rich is because of the Apple family and Zap Apple Jam. In addition to that, we, we got, you know, background on Granny Smith. We got background on Ponyville as a whole. We got to see uh, a lot more stuff. And also, we got some more Big Mac in this. Of, co of course, he didn't do much. He was still mostly just background. But, but hey, we got some more speaking lines from Big Mac. And that's always nice. Yep. <laughs> it's also lovely to see more of the Cutie Mac Crusaders. I love them. They're probably some of my favorite ponies in this series, you know. That, you, you know, say what you will about the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I find them to be absolutely adorable and loads of fun. And th their voice actresses are also loads of fun. And when you know that they put so much time and effort and love into the characters, and you, you really see that come out in the characters themselves when they're on the screen in front of you, and I felt, I feel that the Cutie Mark Crusaders are probably some of the, the best characters in the show, in all honesty. I, I just love the mischief they can get up to. <laughs> well, all of that being said, I think we've touched about uh, touched on just about every point of this episode for the most part. Uh, I think that at this point, it's time to give our uh, give our scores. Uh, I guess um, let's go. Let's start off with Moonlight this time. Moonlight, what would you rate this? I think I'm I'm gonna have to give it a four point. 7.5 out of 5. Why a 4.75? Well, I thought it was a great episode, but it, it seemed a bit too silly for me, with the whole Zap Apple uh, harvesting routine. But silly's not a, not a bad thing, in my opinion. Well, it can be. It's not a bad thing, but I don't know. I just felt it took a little bit away from the whole, the episode. On that point though, I am curious as to how much trial and error Granny Smith went through to find the perfect method for Zap Apple Jam. Probably took quite a while. Probably took quite a while. Well, uh, Crescendo, what about you? As for me, I would give it a 4.5. I thought it was a brilliant episode, but I don't think it can rate up to the better ones like Lesson Zero and Lunar Eclipse. Those are probably my favourite two episodes from this series. I think so, anyway. And as for my reasoning behind giving it such a good rating, again, it's lovely to see the art style expanding ever more, seeing the 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 difference in the trees when they're blooming and 
the the writing was brilliant in this episode as well. It 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 went very well hand in hand. I would have to agree. Uh, I would also give it a four point five out of five, and that's mostly on account of the fact that there were very very minor nitpicks with it that that marked it down for me. The the not getting a, a, a clarification on um on what Granny Smith's name was when she was younger, the fact that the main six weren't really all that involved, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but they could have at least cameoed at the end, if nothing else, eaten some Zap Apple Jam. In addition to that, I would probably say that there were a couple of issues I did have with, with the silly, the, the, the over-the-top silliness of the, the making of the Zap Apples, but I felt that it was also fun at the same time, so it didn't really mark it down too much, especially since that the eccentric, the eccentric, process of of preparing all of the ingredients for zap apple jam served to add more character to granny smith and of course set up the entire plot of the thing we of course focused on apple bloom probably my favorite cutie mark crusader Uh, it's really hard for me to choose between apple bloom and sweetie bell but i think apple bloom wins out because uh i just I, i think she's so adorable well, we just need more Sweetie Belle episodes. <laughs> but pretty much, it came down. It came to, when it came right down to it. I felt that it was a really strong episode with only ver- with only a few minor flaws, and uh, and yeah, it, it rates pretty strong up there. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm looking forward to a Scootaloo episode. Hopefully, you know that that is one thing that I could I could definitely uh, uh, approve of is a, is a Scootaloo episode. You know, we've had some spotlights. Of, uh, of of Sweetie Belle and some spotlights of Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom more than Sweetie Belle, but one person we have yet to get a, a, a spotlight episode for out of the Cutie Mark Crusaders is Scootaloo. And I think that that would be an awesome episode because it could finally give us some insight into Scootaloo's life outside of crusading for her Cutie Mark because... Mm-hmm. We we have no idea what Scootaloo's family is like right now. Um, we have no clue. And so that would make for a great episode, in my opinion. I don't want to see another fanfic involving Scootaloo living in oh, a tree or a cave or in or the that forest. Totally dawtastic, sad, but happy at the same time, heartwarming comic where she's homeless and living in the clubhouse. No, we don't need any more of that. Yeah, no more, no more of that. People, give give her a family that loves her. <laughs> Speaking of Scootaloo, I've, I enjoyed the fact that they brought back the line from the Return of Harmony Part One. Um, what are you, a dictionary? Oh, th- that's the thing. Is I noticed that too, and I, I, I just I, I, the the first thing I thought was, are they trying to turn that into a catchphrase? <laughs> because it's like, what what is every time every time somebody says something that Scootaloo doesn't understand, she's just gonna call him a dictionary and and pout. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, so there you have it. Four point five out of five from me and Crescendo. Four point seven five from Moonlight. This episode was definitely one of the stronger episodes of season two. Gave us a lot of insight into the the founding of Ponyville, uh, the character of Granny Smith, some development uh, between the Apple family, and for the most part was a main six light episode. It, it had very few pe- very few members of the of the main six cast in this episode. So. With that being said, I think that we've covered all that we all that we can with this particular episode, so I think it's about time to sign off. Once again, I'm your host, Brush and Bones. I'm Crescendo. And I'm Moonlight. And join us next time here on Everfree Radio. Stay tuned, everyone.